week we looked at the message Jesus gave us in his Sermon on the Mount concerning the secret place of prayer. And Jesus said, when you pray, go into your closet. And when you have shut the door, pray to your Heavenly Father who sees in secret. And your Heavenly Father who sees in secret will then reward you openly. Through prayer, we can experience God. Through prayer, we can experience His personal nature and personal holiness. We can experience His personal love and His power in our lives. That's why prayer is so important and powerful because prayer brings us together with God. In other words, prayer brings us together with not only God's presence, but God's purposes. Now prayer helps us know God's will. And prayer empowers us to do God's will. Prayer was so important to Jesus that He would often spend a whole night praying, talking to His Heavenly Father. If prayer was that important to Jesus, then surely we should pray. In fact, we should pray about everything. I like what Paul said in Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. In everything, pray. Because prayer brings God's power into our lives and into our circumstances. But prayer does something else for us. Prayer joins us with the mission of God. You see, prayer makes us partners with God in the harvest of souls. And that's what we see in the scripture that we're going to read this morning. In Matthew chapter 9, Jesus is teaching His disciples and teaching us today the importance of praying for the salvation of sinners. Praying for that harvest of souls. No prayer that we could ever pray is more important than this prayer. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 9. And would you stand with me as we honor God's precious Word and I bring you a message that I've entitled, Partners in the Harvest. Matthew chapter 9, beginning in verse 35. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered by sheep having no shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plenty, plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. We pray now that the Holy Spirit would open our hearts, would touch us, would, would mold us and make us into the witnesses that we should be, into the bold proclaimers that we all should be. And Lord, that none of us here would ever be shy about saying, I am a Christian. That, we'd never, that we would never hesitate to speak a word for our Savior. And Father, that every one of us here would be sincere and intentional prayers for the harvest of souls. And God, I pray that you will give us the strength to do those things because you're our help and our strength, Lord. I thought about all that was happening in the lives of our people. And I miss Catherine today dealing with the shingles and all of her problems. And our people, just like people everywhere, are suffering. And I pray, Lord, just like you touched those who needed help when you walked on this earth, we pray, touch us today, Lord, and meet our needs and do everything in our life. Heal us. Save us, strengthen us, comfort us, do everything, Lord, that will bring glory to you through us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Partners in the harvest. On Wednesday evenings, in, right in here in this worship center, we have a group that meets where we are studying the scriptures. And we're going right through the Bible. We're taking a passage of scripture. 
And we're looking at it, and my goal is to teach us, teach all of us how to interpret a passage of scripture for ourselves. Just don't take what someone tells you about it, but, uh, but uh, study it for yourself and determine what that passage of scripture means for you. Now, a number of you are in here today who are in my group on Wednesday evening, and you have learned a couple of the rules, and I'm going to ask for your help today in in taking this passage of scripture and determining what it says. And so just a few things, and this is this is just a pop quiz now today. And the first thing I want to ask you is that when we look at this text and try to understand this text, we first have to look at something else to determine what the text says. What do we look at first? Anybody anywhere in class? The context. The context. So if you're going to understand what the understand the text, then you have to first understand the context. Because you can just take a little verse of scripture and just make that verse of scripture mean just about anything you want it to mean. But you don't want to do that. If you're going to stay true to the word of God, you need to understand what God said in the context. And so that's right. That means looking at the passage before before the section. But there's something else. Of those of you in class and others that may know the answer, in verse 35, when we begin the text that we're reading today, the very first word is the word then. What does that tell us? Something preceded. Something came before this particular text to help us understand the context. And, that, and what came before it, we can look back and we can find in verses 18 through 34. When we look before this particular passage of Scripture that I've read, then you can understand what it is that God is trying to say to us in the passage which we're using as a text today. And these verses tell us about the suffering of individuals that Jesus encountered. Jesus saw their needs and He reached out to them with grace and folks' prayer will move us to do the same. First of all, notice with me how prayer moves us toward compassion for the suffering. I believe that's one of the truths that we Jesus wants us to understand from this passage. That prayer moves us toward compassion for the suffering. Now let's look at just a moment at the verses prior to give us the context. First in verse 18 and 19, a leader in the synagogue came to worship Jesus and begged him to come to his house and touch his daughter who had died. The man said, Come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. In verses 23 22, while Jesus was going with him, a woman who had suffered for 12 years with a blood disease that made her hemorrhage came up behind Jesus and touched the hem of his garment. She said to herself, If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And she went up, she came up behind Jesus, and she touched the hem of his garment, just the bottom part of his, of his, of his robe. And when she did, she was healed immediately. And Jesus, when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. Then in verses 23 through 26, Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house and he found a little girl that found that little girl that had died. And Jesus took her by the hand, and the little girl arose, and the news of this miracle, he raised her from the dead, and the news of that miracle spread throughout the land. And then in verses 17 through 31, as Jesus and his disciples left that house after that miracle, after meeting that need, they were followed by two blind men who cried out, Son of David, have mercy on us. And they followed Jesus into a house, and Jesus looked at them and asked them, Do you believe that I'm able to do this? And they said, Yes, Lord. And immediately uh, they were healed. Jesus said, According to your faith, be it unto you. And immediately their eyes were opened. And then finally, in verses 32 through 34, when Jesus and his disciples left that house, people brought a man to him who could not speak. He was dumb because he was demon-possessed. And the demons had robbed him of his voice. But, but what did Jesus do? Jesus met that need as well. He cast out that demon, and immediately the man could speak. But then the Pharisees spoke up, and said, you cast out demons by the ruler 
of demons. Folks, a lot of times when God's trying to do something great in your life, a lot of times when God's doing something powerful and great for you, there will always be that one or that few that try to put a damper on what God's doing in your life. Just remember that. That listen, if you listen, if you were going the same way the devil was going, he wouldn't bother you at all. But when you start going with God and obeying God and getting on his purposes and into prayer with God, then you can be sure the devil will attack you. All I can tell you is don't give up, dear friend, but stay with the Lord because there's victory in Jesus. Amen? And so the Pharisees said, well, he cast out demons by the prince of demons, the ruler of demons, but that didn't stop Jesus. All of those great miracles teach us something about the suffering of man. All of that suffering that we saw in those previous verses is contributed to sin. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that that poor woman was bleeding because of some sin in her life. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that that little girl died because of her sin or the sin of her daddy or her mother or whatever. Or I'm not saying that those men were blind because of some unconfessed sin in their lives. I'm not saying that. But we must understand that tragedy and suffering comes to us as a consequence of sin upon the human race. That's right. You see, all men are lost, born into this world lost, because all men are born sinners. No one is immune from the sin that contaminated and condemned the human race. God said, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And God said it, the wages of sin is death. Sin, sin is a killer. These people Jesus delivered remind us of the consequences of sin. We can look out in our world today and see reminders of the consequence of sin. That little dead girl reminds us that without God, men are spiritually dead in trespasses and sin. The blind men remind us that without Christ, men are blinded by sin and walk in darkness. And the man who was possessed by demons reminds us that unless we have been born again by the Holy Spirit of God, we are servants of sin and Satan. But these miracles also remind us that there is one answer to the problem of sin into this world, and that answer is a man. His name is Jesus, the God man, Jesus Christ. And that's why Jesus looked upon these people with compassion. Because he saw not only one physical, he not saw not only the physical and emotional suffering of these people, but he saw their worst problem. Folks, there was a worse problem than all these other problems. And that was the spiritual condition of these people. And that's why we need to pray. Because through prayer, we focus on the spiritual needs of men. Now that's what Jesus did. He was not just concerned about the physical suffering they were enduring. He saw beyond the physical to the condition of their human hearts. And the multitude that he saw was lost. In verse 36, Jesus said, He was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like, a, like sheep having no shepherd. They were lost. Now the Greek word for lost means to perish. To experience wasted existence in this life and in, and in eternity. To be utterly destroyed. Being lost is the greatest tragedy of men. It's a life without hope of heaven or eternal life. It is a life without God. John defined being lost in John 3, 17 through 19. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the son to, to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. And men love the darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. You know what John's telling us about the lost condition? Which is the condition of the, men, the most of the people in the world today? He's saying, first of all, 